Hey, how you doing today? My name is Relia and thank you so much for stopping by. Today we are going to do a meta tutorial. This is going to be a tutorial on how to make better gaming tutorials. And the reason why I'm putting this out is because I'm coming up on three years of making YouTube video game tutorials and I found that every time I make tutorials they end up doing far better than anything like a let's play or anything like that I just found out that my personal value is teaching I love teaching uh, I get roughly 1.3 to 1.5 million views per month um, and I'm coming up on 500 videos here very very soon so I've been doing this long enough to be able to teach you a thing or two doesn't mean I know everything but let's go ahead and jump right in and so the very first thing the most important thing is be quick into the point so you got to assume that the viewer has already read the title and the thumbnail so that means you can go ahead and get started in the video very very quickly you only have about 15 to 20 seconds to hook your viewer and after that they're gone so if you don't get into the video they're either gonna try maybe they're gonna try and skip forward to find the content but make it easy on the viewer make it easy for them to get what they need serve the viewer you are serving a community you are serving your audience and that's the way you should see it you should always be looking at this from the viewers perspective every single time you make a video so just just let that sink in be quick and to the point get just get to the video okay so point number two is tell the viewer exactly what they need and the requirements before getting too deep into the video Today we're playing some Hollow Knight and I'm going to show you how to find the Monarch Wings, also known as a double jump ability. Just note that you're going to need the Crystal Heart ability before even going after the Monarch Wings. So even though you want to keep your intro very brief, part of the intro, or at least very early on in the video, if you need a certain ability or a certain upgrade or a certain thing, an item, whatever, before beginning your video, don't let them find out five minutes in, six minutes into the video. Let them know up front and then if you've already got a video on how to find that item or that thing go ahead and link that in the description let them know hey you're gonna need a b and c if you need help finding those go ahead and check out those videos in the description and then get on with the video it's gonna make things so much easier and you're gonna avoid a lot of uh nasty comments in the in the description not the description you're gonna avoid a lot of nasty comments in the comment section yeah and this brings me to point number three, and that is you have to assume that the viewer is playing the game right now. So for me personally, I make a lot of Hollow Knight tutorials, and the way that I always viewed it is that when I'm searching for a tutorial, if I'm searching for something, I probably have the game in my hands or I have it up on the computer and I'm searching for this on my phone because I'm stuck right now. I'm right now looking for something. And so I really don't care too much about the youtuber who is giving me the information I just need information when it comes to tutorials it's very transactional the viewer doesn't care about you they just want the information and there's nothing wrong with that that's that, that's just kind of the way it is right just be aware of that serve your audience in that way think of if you were searching for how to find an ability they don't want to hear your intro about hey man sorry i haven't posted for a week they don't want to hear about just like random details they, they just want the information so uh, that also means that the information that you're giving in a tutorial video is evergreen this video is probably going to help people for more than the next month more than the next week it's probably gonna help for a year maybe even two years who knows so I don't need to give information about what I'm doing next week or hey guys I'm gonna be doing a one-off live stream in a week or whatever get rid of all that information because tutorials are evergreen content that means that they are gonna be useful and up on YouTube getting you views for years and years to come so you want to try to leave out any information that is talking about like dates or things that are going to date your video you want it to feel like it's gonna be relevant for a very long time unless it has something to do with like an update or something that potentially won't be relevant you know what I mean does that make sense I I hope that I hope that does so point number four is to go ahead and add some you into the downtimes. And what I mean by that is don't talk about, hey, sorry, I haven't posted in a week. Don't apologize for stuff, whatever. 
If you want to add some you, I mean, go ahead and add something that's interesting or different or funny while you are getting from point A to point B or add some humor into the content. Just because you're telling somebody how to do something doesn't mean you can't be funny or interesting, unique or yourself. Just get to the point, get them the information they need, but you can, you can have fun while you're doing that. You can add some of yourself and your own perspective to that. If you want to go this way, there is a bench, but you have to defeat a boss just to get it. Oh, darn. Really got to watch out that laser. Skip doing that boss. So people will come for the tutorials, get what they need, and they leave. So that's the one thing about tutorials is that if you don't add a little bit of you to the video, you're not going to get a subscriber. You're not going to have a reason for somebody to come back. Uh, I'm not going to lie. For me, my tutorials and my channel, I have something like an 80% rate of people who are not subscribed. And I, it's for pretty good reasons because I make a lot of tutorials that people get what they need and then they take off. People do come to the live streams and different things like that. And that, that's great. But having the views and building trust with my community is amazing. One of the good things about this, by putting out good tutorials, people know to keep coming back to my channel over and over and over again. So you want the viewers to keep coming back and you want to have them watch more and more videos. Honestly, it's okay if people don't subscribe. As long as they're coming back for more videos, uh, that's a win. That's a huge win because the more videos they watch, the more times YouTube is going to suggest videos to them and just keep pushing your content in front of them over and over and over again. So it, it's good. It's good. Tutorials are a great way to get found and, and work the search algorithm before anybody knows who you are. All right. So step number five is show the map whenever possible. Just to show you where we are on the map. It's right here. We came down and to the right, essentially. You want to make sure that you're not going for so long that people can't find their way or maybe somebody skips forward in the video a little bit and then they would have no idea how to get to where you're at. So every once in a while, take a pause, kind of zoom out and give like a higher level overview of where you're at in the game and it's going to make it much, much easier for people to follow in the long run and people just really appreciate it in general. I found that out. It, it helps a lot. The sixth and final piece of advice that I have for you is to add all of the steps into the description. And this is going to make your video much, much more searchable. And this is definitely helpful, especially if you're a smaller YouTuber. This is just going to make it so people can find you, especially through Google and also through YouTube as well. This makes your video just much more searchable. Uh, you can add timestamps to the video, uh, starting with uh, zero semicolon zero zero um, and then when you add other timestamps it, it puts this like little bar at the bottom so if you look at the bottom of the screen right now I'll make sure that I add the the timestamps I don't know if they call bookmarking I forget what they call it I forget what it's called um, but it, it puts a little thing at the bottom so you can jump to all the different steps and uh, it's super super helpful um, and then also you want to make sure to link to all of the related videos in the description as well as the end cards we kind of briefly touched on that oh <sighs> good stuff. I really hope that this is going to help at least a couple of people out there just make better gaming tutorials in general. If you want to know like what you should be making tutorials on and stuff like that, maybe I'll do a follow-up video that kind of goes over a little bit more of the search engine optimization and just making videos that people are searching for. And we can also talk about what value you should be bringing to your audience. And it's different for everybody. For me, I love teaching. I love breaking things down to their smallest bits and pieces. And my main goal when it comes to my tutorials is to help gamers get the most out of their game time. And so I hope that you found this super helpful. Uh, let me know down in the comments below, what tips do you have when it comes to tutorials? For gaming tutorials, even if you don't make YouTube content and you're just watching this because for whatever reason, if you don't make videos, what tips do you have as a viewer? What do you want to see in a game tutorial? I would love to know your opinion down below. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. My name is Relia, and be sure to stop for the live streams every Tuesday, 8.30 Pacific Standard Time, and I'll talk to you again more real soon. Thanks.